All right. Uh, okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. So, good morning, all. Yeah, it's the disadvantage of having online programs, right? But then what to do? We are bound to have online sessions because uh, there are some, you know, it's a, uh, the problem is the continuation of COVID uh, problem, so we cannot avoid it. But then now, uh, yeah, we will try to see how, uh, I'm like, as much as, I mean, like, as interactive as possible, all right? Uh, but then for me, I really like to have uh, offline programs so that we can see face to face and we can have interaction, two ways interactions. You know, I always uh, love having two ways interaction and participative, participatory uh, teaching and learning methods. Okay. Yeah, uh, my name is the Lalni Loma. They just call me Nitea. I belong to the Department of Extension Education and Rural Development, Mizoram University. I'm a professor and head of the department. Uh, yeah, with regards to my education, I finished my degree programs from Pune. Previously, it was known as a Pune, but now the name has been changed to Pune, Maharashtra, which is not far from Mumbai, right? Then after completion of my UG degree, I went to Philippines to pursue my father's studies, master's program in rural development and PhD program in rural development from Central Luzon State University, which is uh, about 140 kilometers from Manila. I was there for four years. Then uh, 1998, I came back from Philippines. Then I joined the state government in uh, rural development department in 2001. No, it was in 2000, the year 2000. Then after that, I joined State Institute of Rural Development again. Then I was promoted to Principal Extension Training Center under State Institute of Rural Development. Then uh, in 2007, I got a call for interviews in Mizoram University in the Department of Extension Education and Rural Development. There, you know, luckily, yeah, I should say luckily because uh, it's a rare chance, right, to be selected. So I got selected in 2007. I joined the university, Mizoram University, on uh, 7th of February, 2007. And since then, I am here in the university, right? So I think with that brief introduction, uh, it's enough for now, right? We don't need to introduce much because we have to cover a little more of the course content, right? Uh, so today my topic will be, you know, it's a rare kind of topic. You know, you may, be hear, you may be hearing a lot of lectures on leadership, right? This classical leadership styles, I think most of us are aware of it. But today, you know, I'll be giving a lecture on building community leaders, which is very much important for, you know, even, uh, Taking the, you know, the NEP 2020, National Education Policy 2020, you know, it gave a lot of training for producing the whole human being, right? Holistic human being, not only in the subject matter. 
the NEP is trying to produce a human being as a holistic human being. Meaning he will not be expert in only his field of specialization. After graduation, he will be able to deal with people. He will have communication skills. He will be ethical. You know, there are so many degree holders who don't have this ethical aspect in their life. Values. We, have, we are talking about human values, right? So all those things are there in uh, uh, national education policy. And by the way, I'm the nodal officer for implementation of national education policy in Mizoram University. And we are working on uh, you know, the framework, the curriculum framework for undergraduate programs. We are in the final stage. So for Mizoram University, we have implemented NEP 2020 in our PG programs, but the undergraduate programs, since it's required a lot of you know, changes there, uh, we, we are, we are uh, gearing up to implement from this coming session, starting from July session, July 2023. Okay, that's that. So my topic, I'll try to up, to share the screen. Let's see, this, the, the screen, yeah, it is here. Okay, let me just, the screen, uh, whether we can, uh, all right. Yeah, building community leaders. I want to ask you a question. You can just uh, interact with me through chat box, okay? Are leaders born or made? I want some answer from the participant, please. Is there anyone who would like to answer? All right, let's see. Here, where is it? Okay, where is it? Mate, yeah, mate, mate. Oh, so many, so many answers. Nowadays, it's mate. Oh, that means in the previous days, it's born. Or how? How do we define? Yeah, nothing. No, yeah, right. Nowadays, okay. The social situation molds a person into leaders. Very good, Priyanka. Yeah, yes. Yeah, made. But leadership qualities are important to have in the person. Shreya. Okay, Shreya said made. But leadership qualities are important to have in the person. Right, any more? Yeah, here most of our answers say, most of our answers say that leaders are made, right? Yeah, here Depika said, there is also some inborn qualities. Yeah, I think no one is wrong here, right? All of us are right. Leaders are made. And there are some leaders who are born leaders, right? So thank you for the interaction. We will keep on trying to interact each other. Okay, so that's it. Uh, but then let me just see how, okay. All right. So, uh, yeah. Uh, to begin with, let us try to define community. We'll try to define community. All right. Building community leaders is the topic of today. Then we will see how we will define community because this is the first and foremost importance in our topic today. Okay, let's see how it is defined. The notion of community, community is important for the concept of community leadership. And it can be defined by locality as well as interest, right? So when we talk about community, imagine a community, community will be having a boundary, right? Geographical boundary. We can define a particular community in terms of geographical boundary. 
That is how we define community in rural development, particularly a village community, right? But here, the definition, we will see while we were trying to define, the community can be of interest group also, of interest group. Those who have same interests, they can be one community, right? Regardless of the geographical boundary, that's it. Okay, so now let's continue. Macmillan and Chavez, they define community by four dimensions. What are the four dimensions? Membership, influence, reinforcement, and shared emotional connections. Membership, influence, reinforcement, and shared emotional connection. So here they are not talking about the community in terms of geographical location, right? Anyway, we will see, we will continue. How do we define further these dimensions of community? Let's see membership. People feel like they belong to a group that is membership. So if you feel like you belong to a group, then you are a membership of the particular group of community. And there are at least, they are or at least feel like they are able to make difference within that group. So they are, if they feel like they are making difference within that group, that is influence. Okay, so membership is there, define well. Influence is there. So we have got two dimensions of the community. Okay, let's see the next. Community can meet their members need that is reinforcement. So when you are in a community, everyone who is working for the benefit of the members, meeting the needs of the member, that is reinforcement, right? Let's see another one. While shared emotional connection is built through shared places and experiences such as joint history, and time spent together, you know, all those things are a part of community, right? So let us continue to present. Community is not only linked to a physical entity. Yeah, as I just mentioned earlier, it is not only linked to a physical entity, but Communities can also be based on shared interest, such, such as culture and politics, right? We have a group of politics, political groups, politicians. That can be a community also because they share the same interest. Then a cultural group, or we share the same history, the same, same locality. We are from the same village. We are from the same academic background. Right, we are from the same academic background. We are academic community. We say the whole India, we teachers are okay, belonging to academic community. So it's of interest, regardless of uh, physical entity, geographical area. Okay, then here communities can be seen as complex system, which are not only defined by boundaries, same such as geographical location, but are open to different participants despite their location. Can we have a community of 20 countries, right? Now, India is hosting G20. The presidency for this year is with India, G20 presidency, right? I had an opportunity to attend the G20 program. Uh, under the G20 program, uh, they have uh, divided uh, the groups in uh, diff diff different uh, groups. Think 20. Think 20 is for the academicians, right? Last month in January, 
I had an opportunity to attend the G20 meet by the name Pink 20, T20, T20 in Bhopal, wherein around 20 participants from 20 different countries came and participated. So now under this G20, we can consider that, okay, these countries participating in the G20 group, they can be also a group, a community of G20, right? That is that. Furthermore, people can be members of multiple communities. This is also important one, okay? You can be in only one community, wherein you can be in multiple communities also. You can be members of multiple communities, academic community, political community, right? What, what, what communities we want to mention that is there? Can transfer, translate, and transform experiences from one community to another. So these are the, uh, the definition given by different experts in community. Okay, here, another point here we can see is community leadership is different from the classical leadership, being about leaders, asking, persuading, influencing followers, influencing followers. Sullivan stated here that community leadership is different from classical leaders. That's all, okay? It's not that classical because we have hierarchy, a line of authority there, but in community, it's not so. Okay, that's it. Then in turn, it is usually less hierarchical. Community leadership, it is usually less hierarchical. Okay, it's not, okay, a hierarchy of authority passing on the power from the top, down, 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 like that. It's not that, okay? usually less hierarchical, often based on volunteer action. When we talk about community leadership, you're not getting paid for doing or leading the group, the community. It's a voluntary, okay? It's a voluntary base. So community leadership is often based on volunteer action. Okay, another one, involving the creation of social capital. You, we know what is financial capital, right? We know what is social capital, right? So the community leaders are involving in creation of social capital. When you talk about financial capital, what is that? That is just a question, okay? not to answer. But when we talk about social capital, which one is more important? Financial capital or social capital? If you have good social capital, you will have good financial capital. That's all, right? I don't, I, we, we will not be debating here which comes first, X or hen, right? We will have a lot of uh, debate if we open the discussion here. So here, social capital, creation of social capital is one of the main points we have to remember now. Okay, next point. Acting as a symbolism for change. Community leaders usually act as a symbol for change. You know what our Mahatma Gandhi Ji said? If you want to see change, be the change yourself. Be the change of the change you want to be that way, right? So if you want to change something, don't wait for others to come and change. You just act to change the situation, right? This is how we will go into community leadership. Right? Symbolism for change. Now, we are teachers here. We want something to change in the community. But if we ask 
for the community leaders who are there to change. If we wait for them, change may not come. Then who, who will come? Why can't we act and be the change of what we want? Right? Often informal, non-elected leaders. So community leadership is not elected. Informal, right? These are the definitions of different uh, things. So we may have some argument also, but then uh, let us see it as defined by the different experts. Okay, next. Not a tightly defined concept. When we talk about community leadership, we cannot just say, okay, this is community leadership. It's very difficult to define, but it is also defined by the boundaries of the community within which it operates and community leadership can consist of one individual or a group of people. So when we envision the community leadership, it can be one individual leader or it can be a group of people who are leading to bring changes to the community. That's it. Okay, that's it. Then unlike organizational leadership that has tended, let me just move this one, it's blocking me. Uh, uh. Okay, tended to rely on position and power in organizational leadership. It's important also to be in the position of power because we have to control, you know, the whole thing. One person in the top, he has to control. If he has no power, then how he will control, right? And subsequently attributed leadership to those positions. So unlike organizational leadership, leadership from a community perspective has tended to be more emergent. Another word we want, we, we have to remember today is Community leaders are usually emergent leaders. They pop up when certain problems comes up, certain issues in the com community comes up, right? Or we can initiate, a community leader can initiate something for the benefit of the community. So here, emergent is another important word we have to remember, okay? Then let's see, uh, what else? Okay, specifically leadership opportunities have generally been initiated when an issue has been identified. You don't have to be a leader at the time, but sudden issues pop up in, pop up in your community. Then you take the lead to solve that issue, okay? That's how sometimes community leadership are emerge out of it, issues. Leaders have tended to emerge through the initiation and spread of interest around an issue, right? The definition, you can see the, the authors, the experts who define community leadership as in the bracket. Okay, then effective community leaders have been characterized as change agent we have talked about it right change if you want to bring change what what is that be the change yourself change agent so community leaders are characterized as change agents individuals with the ability to mobilize others so in community, you cannot solve alone the problem. You cannot solve the problem alone. So you have to mobilize others. So if you have followers, you know, to work with you, partners, then you can become, you are, you are becoming a community leader. Create condition, right? And take the initiative. You see the issue, you create a condition, then you take initiative. That's how community leaders emerge. 
Effective community leaders tend to have a sense of service. This is also another important point. Sense of service. You know, in my lecture, in my rural development classes, I usually give the lecture and usually says that we have to have the we feeling. For community development, rural development, we have to have the we feeling, belongingness, right? So if you belong to a community and if you feel that you are belonging to a community, whatever service you give to the community, as a community leader or as a member of the community, that shows the quality of community leaders, a sense of service. Community leaders sometimes they don't they don't ask for you know uh, wages, money. They just stands up and take the initiative because they consider the service they can render is for the community, a sense of service. Right? And accountability. It is also very important. Accountability. Take example of any politician around you. We are not blaming them. Okay, we are not blaming them. Do we find accountability there? When something is wrong, people come and, you know, ask, he or she will try to run away from it, right? Not admitting the mistake he made. Accountability. Whatever he does, he has to be accountable. That's kind of the, the, the leader we find in community leadership. Okay. Then here, community leadership continue. Community leaders have also been found to be highly participative. What do we mean by participative? Right? They don't just give orders. They are there in the field. Take initiative, participative. And they don't give order. They just motivate, mobilize the people to participate. So it is two ways, right? Giving service, then mobilizing the people. Participative. He participates and he mobilizes people to participate. That's how we look at it. And have been shown to take on a symbolic role for the group. Right? This is how uh, Bim Baum, Bim Baum, right? Bim Baum 1988 defines community leaders. Furthermore, an implicit attribution of leadership has been found to be more readily made to individuals that behave ethically. Yeah, in community leadership, they are more of ethical. They are all, they take moral responsibility for whatever they do. With an evident set of values, human values. You know, if you go through the graduate attributes, of NEP 20 document, NEP 2020 document. You will find all these things. So this is very relevant for teachers also. We will see in the later part of our presentation, we will see how we can be community leaders, how we teachers can be community leaders. Okay, so here there are the, the, the key words we, can, we have to remember is ethical. Moral values. Okay, if we have this, what a good community leaders we will be. Okay. Community leadership is the courage, creativity, and capacity to inspire participation. You know, uh, participation in the field of rural development is very relevant. This is the catchword. Wherever we go, we said participatory approach, participatory planning, participatory implementation, participatory evaluation, participatory monitoring, 
See how beautiful it is. Even in our classroom teaching, if we have participatory methods of teaching, there is no, the class will not be boring, right? We ask questions, the student interact. But that's why I said this kind of online program, you know, I'm not comfortable at all. But then what to do? Development and sustainability for strong communities. They have the sense of this courage, creativity, capacity, right? Let me just see the chat box. What is there? Oh, yeah. Good morning, sir. I think, uh, yeah, Vivo. I don't know the name, but then, mm, yeah, the good morning has come a little bit late, but then anyway, good. <laughs> All right. Community leaders is, uh, yeah, we have covered this. Okay. We will continue. All right. Now we will see community leadership studies. Why I include these studies in the our presentation today? Because we are teachers. We are academic community. We belong to academic community. So we need to do to, we need to have some ideas on you know researches, studies wherein community leadership studies have been taken up. right? Let's see. Education, the education, in the education field, community leadership has been studied by Bukowski et al. Really? So these are the studies we could find in the field of community leadership. Then another field, health. Health, community leadership in health. Study taken up by Tra Pence et al. Right? Then local government. This is quite, I mean, a common. Sullivan, if you see the, the previous slides, if you could think of the previous slides again, Sullivan, the definition, most of the definition we have taken from Sullivan only. Local government. So it's very befitting, right? When you talk about local government, it's more chance to study community leadership there, right? But education also, what kind of education program wherein the community leaders are evolving and taking initiatives? Local politics, this is also very relevant, right? Then another one is tourism. We talk about community, uh, what is that? Uh, Ecotourism, it's all community, right? Rural tourism, it's all, a community. So who are taking leadership there in the community, the rural tourism, ecotourism, and local politics? Who are there as play, playing the role of community in the local politics, local government, in health? Who are there to uh, who are there to taking up the leader community leadership in health aspect? In the field of education, who are there community leadership? Who are there in I'm like taking up the community leadership in education, right? So these are just an example of some studies which have been taken in various fields. Another one is there are five primary methods of identifying community leaders. So in their studies, you know, to identify community leaders, five methods of identifying community leaders in the community. Let's see, what are those? Positional approach. We will see one by one again. Propositional approach. Second, reputational approach. Third, decision-making approach. Fourth, opinion leadership approach. Social participation approach. So suppose you are going to take up studies on community leadership. You have to take combination of these five or you can take the first approach or single approach or a combination of all the approaches one or two or all the same all right here let's see positional approach how do they identify community leader when they apply positional approach this method identifies leaders who are in positions of authority using this approach 
An extension agent identifies people who make key decision in local organizations, such as who make key decision in local organization, such as this is position, the position in political groups, the position in church, who makes decision in political group, who makes the decision, schools, who makes the decision, the parents, the teachers, or the students themselves, social organization. We may have NGOs, civil society organizations. Who are there making key decision? So by following this approach, different groups, you can identify in the community who are there making key decision in the local organizations. Government entities, financial institutions, so those are the, the, the groups where we can identify community like that using positional approach. Okay. Another one, second one is reputational approach. This method uses members of target audience to identify well-informed members of the community who should be engaged. Here, we can continue reading. When using this approach, an agent first identifies people who are knowledgeable about their community and then ask them questions such as reputational approach. Who are reputed in the community? Then you ask them, who does this community look to when an important decision needs to be made? Right? You ask an elderly person who is a reputed a reputed uh, elderly person, right? When community face problems or make important decision, whom the community looked into for suggestion, for decision, who would you choose to make a decision that would affect this com community? So trying to identify the community leaders there. This is just a kind of uh, study approach. All right, if we are interested to do research in community leadership, these are some guide, some guidelines. Okay, the next one, decision-making approach. This method identifies leaders who are actively participating in formal decision-making and in the community, right? So in the decision making, who are actively participating usually? Like let's say now, we call a Gram Sabha, which is the general body meeting of the village, right? Then you participate there. You identify, oh, who are there, who are making, who are there participating in decision making of, for the village community? There you can just identify or you can just identify okay mainly the local bodies the social bodies who are there making major decision with regards to community issues okay opinion leadership approach you just take the opinion of leaders this method identifies leaders who set examples in the community these are leaders who may not hold formal position as we said it's not a formal position, right? Hierarchical leadership, but have high levels of social participation and social status. It's highly regarded, as well as great levels of exposure to mass media. Opinion leaders are identified when people who are part of the community are asked, where do you look for advice and information? Okay, you, you want to, you go to the community and ask, Okay, if you are about to ask advice on this issue, whom do you approach? Then that person say, oh, Mr. Janggu, right? So you can identify, oh, Janggu is regarded as a community leader. Then further research can continue. Okay, social participation approach. This method identifies leaders through their participation in voluntary organization in the community, right? 
in every community, we have voluntary organization, right? Who are participating in that voluntary organization? They are community leaders also. So if you want to ask more information about your research, you can approach those uh, community leaders, those who are participating more in the, the voluntary organizations. They can give you information, right? Those are there. Here, elements of successful community leadership. So slowly we are coming to, you know, uh, towards the how we can become community leaders, right? Here, Onyx and Leonard use complexity leadership theory in their analysis of five communities and identify seven elements of successful community leadership. So if when we say community a successful community leader, what are the elements? Number one, leaders were embedded in the formal and informal network of community. Network, right? They are a part of the community network. They know how to, you know, uh, keep inform I mean, like they know how to keep in touch with the community that work that network is there decision making was shared with the community right a good community leader effective community leader shares decision with the community not only keeping his decision there he shared in the process he consult the community in making decision right participative Leaders were operating in an open system, engaging with others. Leaders are not standing alone, right? They are engaging with others. Leaders had vision about the future of the community. We talk about change, right? Future, visionary. Leaders had practical management skills. Yeah, practical management. It can be learned or it can be, you know, inborn skills it can be both we have the traditional leaders who are really good in management management skills right managing things leaders had planning in place for their potential successor in the classical leadership we don't usually leaders don't usually train their successor but in the community you know this change of continuous processes there. Leaders had planning in place for their potential successor. So by leading the community, they train the younger ones so that they, they become, one day they become leader in their place. Leaders had commitment, persistence, and energy. Commitment is important point here again. Persistence. Sometimes as a community leader, you may be disappointed to take up certain initiative, but persistence is there. This is the element of successful community leader. Commitment. Are we commitment to our job, our, our teaching now? I will, I will, are, are we teaching just because we are getting salary? That is a different part. Right, but in community, when we say effective, successful community leader, he is committed. He has persistence. He has the energy to pursue whatever he thinks is good for the community. That's it. So these are the elements of successful community leadership. Let's see another one. Qualities of great community leaders. What are the qualities? Let's see, right? There is one in the chat box, let, let me see. Sir, don't you think there must be a compulsory curriculum which trains students to be community leaders as many foreign university have courses such as service learning in their curriculum? What is your take on it, sir? Priyanka, very good question. Thank you for asking. Yes, now, we have talked about NEP 2020, right? 
it is now becoming a compulsory component of our curriculum. Community engagement is there. Then UGC also has come up with a participatory community development planning, the thing through credit course, community engagement. And apart from that, the, the requirement now is the student, every student, regardless of you know, rich or poor or their background, they have to go to the community, particularly in the rural areas to learn the experience of rural livelihoods there. So that is a, a part of the curriculum. So thank you for asking the questions. There, they can play a lot of leadership there. The students can organize, you know, sometimes we call it rural camp in social work, right? Then sometimes we call, uh, how do we call, uh, rural internship, you know, some project works will be there, field works will be there. Uh, it's a two, two credit course. So everyone will be involved in, even the teachers have to go to the rural areas or the community nearby, or even a little farther, they have to work with the community. And whatever research we plan in the future should be for solution of the community issues and problem. Okay. Thank you for asking question. So don't hesitate to ask any question. Okay, I will try to answer in the meantime. Okay, here, quality of great community leaders, self-awareness. What is that, self-awareness? A good community leader should be knowledgeable of this or her strength and weaknesses. Self-awareness, very important. You know, don't talk of community leaders here. Just take as we are teachers. Self-awareness, are we aware of ourselves? Do we know our weakness? Do we know our strength? If we don't know, then it's better that we try our best to know ourselves, to have self-awareness. A good community leader should be knowledgeable of his or her strengths and weaknesses. This will enable the leader to exploit better his ability while seeking help from others for his or her weakness areas, her weak areas. This is very important, right? As teachers, we think we know everything, but sometimes students also knows about the current issues better than we are. So we have to keep update of ourselves, right? So here community, whenever you feel like, okay, this is our weakness. So if I, I know my weakness, I'm not hesitating to approach the persons who knows, that's it. Leading others with the knowledge of self eases the leader's job since it allows for the selection of the best fit roles and sharing of responsibility with others. Okay, okay, all right, uh, good. Second one is eagerness to learn and adopt. Here, the community, as a community leader, earning respect from members is one of the key enablers of one roles, one's role. To do so, learning to listen from others, appreciating their inputs and changing courses of action is essential. It's clear, right? Eagerness to learn and adopt. Community leaders will, are eager, not will, okay, are eager to learn and adopt. You know, sometimes instead of listening, Listening, we try to, you know, speak more, telling people most of the time. Learning to listen from others. The most powerful communication tool is listening. You go and read any book on communication. The most powerful 
way of communication is listening to others. That's it. Okay. Here, let's go to the next. Empathy. What do we mean by empathy? Is there any one from psychological uh, psychology background? Can you please uh, help us define empathy? How do we define empathy? We say here, quality of great community leaders. It is one of the qualities. Empathy is one of the great qualities. How do we see empathy? How do we define? Is there anyone? Okay, let me just see the, the, the answer. Understanding others' emotions. Shreya, thank you very much. Sapnam, Praveen, when one can feel the pain of others. I think these are good definitions, right? Very good. Thank you very much. So it's clear, right? Okay, we will continue. Thank you very much, uh, Shreya and Sapnam. So here, empathy. As a leader, it's important that you recognize how the community Uh, sorry, my my network just went off.
Okay, uh, am I audible from here? Yes, sir, audible, sir. Okay, anyway, now <laughs> I'm just joining with my, my phone. I think there is a problem with the network in the uh, in my computer. But anyway, let me try again and see if I can join. Uh, if it is not working, then we can just uh, go ahead. Uh, read. Uh, yeah, we still have around 35 minutes. Let us see. Uh, my presentation may not be there anymore, but then let us see. Uh, I'll just uh, share some uh, slides here. I will just uh, go through my slides here in the computer, but uh, yeah, I think if you can uh, hear me, we will continue as uh, it is, okay. Then the what we we were in the empathy right yeah empathy is putting ourselves in others shoes we have got uh, very good answers from uh, two of our participants also right so empathy is one of the qualities of community leaders and another one is honesty and integrity so honesty and integrity a leader must ensure that he is trustworthy to the community and to other leaders. This is very important. Okay. Then another one here is dedication. We said commitment, right? Previously, we talked about the commitment of community leaders. Here, dedication is dedicated. Then service. We also talk about in the definition, it's uh, that the community leaders are having a sense of service, community service. Then another one here is, uh, let me just enlarge the thing. I could not see properly. Okay, uh, yeah, interpersonal skills. You know, uh, if you go through the graduate attributes, which is uh, included in the curriculum framework prepared before UG program prepared by UGC, which was notified in uh, December, the month of December, 2022. Two months ago you know this is one of the important graduate attributes a graduate should be able to have these skills interpersonal skills he should know how to deal with not only his subjects not only his specialization if he's a graduate he has to have expect expected human values he has to have uh, he has to have honesty, integrity. He should know how to deal with others, interpersonal skills. Okay. Here, another one is forward thinking. He should plan. He should have vision, right? Here, the forward, forward thinking is about being visionary as a leader. One should dream for his community and effectively share the dream. So it's kind of, you know, having only dream, vision is not enough, right? We have to act. We have to implement our vision that is there. We have so many leaders full of visions, right? That is not good. So we have to forward thinking with action. That is my point. Then another one is intelligence. Intelligence, see, here also, you know, I'm tempted to come back to the graduate attributes because I have gone through all those things and very relevant. In our national education policy, when you talk about intelligence, it's not only about your subject matters, right? Intelligence is in many phases there. is seen as one who can care of the tough stuff that may happen to him or the community. So that uh, life skill is there, technical skills is there, right? Here, intelligence here is beyond being smart to include high level of 
both emotional and social intelligence. Right? Then motivation. Community leaders will have motivation for himself. But he is also good in motivating others. That is the quality. As teachers, we may be motivated, but are we good in motivating our students to take up activities? Activities belonging to our curriculum or extracurriculum or outside the whole thing. Are we able to motivate? That is the challenge. Okay. Here, uh, I don't know. Let me try again because these slides are important. Let me just try once. Then if it doesn't work, we will continue with the, the thing. Okay. Uh, let me just see this one again. Zoom. Join. Uh, okay, it seems it's not coming up. Uh, stay on. Anyway, let us. Okay, let us forget about it. Uh, yeah, though you cannot uh, see the slides, I'll just go through the slides again here, yeah, no problem. Uh, so here, are you a community leader? Can you be a community leader? That is the question. Okay, in my presentation here, are you a community leader? Let's see, let's try to answer. Community leaders take responsibility for the well-being and improvement of their communities. Are you a community leader? Are you interested in becoming one? Try answering the questions in this leadership quiz. Are you someone who wants to improve your community? Are you someone who wants to improve your community? If yes, then you can become a community leader. Are you someone who has something to contribute? If not, then you can stay alone. But if you say yes, you have something to contribute to the community, right? Are you someone who does not wait around for someone else to get the job done? You see the problem there, a problem there in your community or in the classroom, right? And you are waiting for someone to solve that problem. Yes. Uh, can you hear? I got a... Is it, am I audible? Yeah, okay. Yes, sir, you are audible, sir. Okay. So said I cannot uh, join, I don't know, something wrong with the network in my computer. So just like that, okay. Anyway, we are uh, about uh, 25 minutes left. So no issue, we'll try to cover the whole thing. All right, uh, here, we'll go to the, uh, yeah. Here, why should you be a community leader then? Why should you be a community leader? Leadership can be good for you. This is the answer, one of the answers I have in my slides, okay? In fact, many people enjoy leading. Are you enjoying or not? Leaders can be good for you. The question is, why should you be a community leader? The answer is, leadership can be good for you. In fact, many people enjoy leading. You don't have to lead out of obligation. It's beautiful, right? You just lead out because there is a call inside you. 
you are not leading just for the sake of, uh, because of obligation, right? So you can be a community leader if you feel there is a call inside you. That is that. Okay. You can choose to lead and participate in ways that energize you and help you grow. So playing the role of community leader, you can get energy out of it. It will energize you and help you grow. So it will grow. It will help you grow instead of leading in a way that drains you, right? Sometimes classroom teaching always drains us, right? So we have to be involved in our community, even in our classroom. Classroom can be also a community, treated as a community, as we defined in the previous, right? You can choose to work on issue that you care about. Don't care about any others. Don't care about others. You care about what you think the issue is. Then you solve that issue. Okay. But not alone with others. You can take on challenges that are fun. F U and fun. Rewarding or interesting. It's up to you. So any type of leadership you can uh, get yourself involved in it. Okay, you can make a difference. What difference we can make? Do you ever daydream that you are the one to save the day? Perhaps you are the passerby who drives into the water to rescue the drowning child. Some, a child is drowning in the water. Then you are passed by and you drive, you dive into the water to save, to rescue that child who is drowning in the water, the river, the lake, right? So those kind of activities you can play. To be a community leader, you don't have to be, you know, in that big uh, high position in your condition, with your present condition, you can be community leader. Right? Maybe you are the person who definitely persuades the terrorists to put down the gun just in the nick of time. You are a very good leader. If you can persuade a terrorist to put down his gun, right? The government officials, big, big officials, they are not able to persuade the terrorists, a terrorist to put down his gun. But you can be the person who can persuade, right? That way, community leadership can play a very important role. It is human to want to make a significant difference in the world. And you can be one, that one. The day-to-day -day acts of community leadership are usually not as dramatic as described above. And they usually don't inspire the... Co anyway, this is not required, okay? Here, example, still as a community leader, you can make a profound contribution. What are these contributions? Establishing a daycare center. You know, now our university department of education, they have come up with a proposal which has been approved in the academic council to establish a daycare center for the working mothers in the campus. What kind of good community leaders they are? My colleagues in the education department. Establishing in the campus a daycare center, which is really need of the community. Increasing job opportunities in your community. Getting rid of a toxic waste dump in your community. These are the ways you can play the role of community leadership. You don't have, you don't need to have any quality qualification there, right? It has to be just a desire from inside. Or empowering others to lead are all activities that are heroic in their own way, right? Let us see some example. The story of Isis Johnson. Isis Johnson, I don't know if any one of us 
have heard about this small Isis Johnson. When Isis Johnson of New Orleans was four years old, she was four years old, right? She saw a news report about starving children in Ethiopia, which made her feel the need to ache, to act. So a four-year girl saw in the news reporting starving of children in Ethiopia. Then now inside, she has the feeling that she should act. At five, her grandmother at her side. She went knocking on doors, asking for food donations for the poor people in her community. See, at five, at the age of five, small Isis Johnson, taking the courage of knocking the doors of their neighbors, asking for food donation to feed the poor in her community. What the leadership there. When she was sick, six years old, she collected 1,600 items to give to people in need. Imagine. Can we do this? Why not? If a six years old girl could collect at the age of six years, could collect 1,600 1, items to give to the people in need from the neighboring households. The next year, she collected 4,000 items, increasing year by year. When Hurricane Andrew hit, she, correct, she collected 1,648 pieces of clothing to send to the people affected by the storm. Shortly after the hurricane, Isis' grandmother suggested she start a foundation. With the help of her grandmother and a lawyer, she established the Isis Johnson Foundation. Isis was then eight years old. An eight years old girl setting up, establishing a foundation to help the poor. It's unbelievable, right? It's really impressive. Can we do this? Can we do this? As a community leaders, we can play the role of community leader, not only in the classroom. It can be in the community or it can be in our neighboring community. I was an eight year old, eight years old. See, these are uh, some examples of community leadership. When we talk about community leaders, we may be thinking of the age of 60, 50, 40, 30 at least. But here, a girl, a four years old girl, five years old girl, six year old girl, eight years, she as a Isis, a little young girl, Isis established a foundation to help the poor, right? Here, we may not all establish our own foundations by the time we are eight, but we can make a significant difference if we put our minds to it. Doing so can be infinitely satisfying. You know, most of us will have experience. We may not always give things to the needy. But every time we share, we give. You know the feeling we are even more happy than the ones who are receiving. I think we have that experience, right? We may not all, I will read again, we may not all establish our own foundations, but by the time we are eight, like small girl, Isis, but we can make a significant difference if we put our minds to it. This is important. Doing so can be infinitely satisfying. Right? This is it. Then here, my notes continue. My notes continue. 
There is room in this world for more community leaders. You can be one. There is room in this world for more community leaders. The model of one leader at the top with everyone else at the bottom just does not work for communities. One or two leaders can possibly solve all the complex problems that your community face. With more community leaders, our communities will do better. We are not talking about only one, one leader in the community. Everyone can play the leadership role in the community so that our community will do better. The more people become leaders, the more problems we will solve. But in the opposite way, you know, uh, I think we have heard the saying that too many cooks spoil the broth, right? So there may be also some, some, some incidents where too many leaders spoil the community, but the community leaders we are talking here is not that kind of leadership. It's not competition among the leaders. It's a synergy, a convergence, working together, partnership, right? This is the kind of community leaders we are talking about here. Okay, we need community leaders to think about and organize around many issues. Youth development, economic development, substance abuse, crime, the environment, healthcare, the list goes on and on. Each issue will require a troop of skilled leaders to handle them. We need leaders who are women, young people, people of colors, low-income people, immigrants, people with disabilities, and many others that have been told that they should follow others, not to lead. We need leaders from all walks of life in order for ours to be a truly democratic society. It has become a little politics, right? Democratic society. Here, when we talk truly democratic society, it's participation of the citizen, the community. Not only electing one leader in the community and that leader rule for five years, without caring much of our ideas, our you know, contribution. It has to be a truly democratic society wherein true community leaders can play the role. Okay. How will those leaders work together? Leaders have to work together. That is the thing, not competing each other. Okay. That is a skill that community leaders need to learn. We all have to learn to cooperate. While talking about the importance of community leadership, this cooperation is very important. That's why, why we form G20, group of 20 countries. Instead of competing each other, instead of fighting each other, We need to cooperate. With that spirit, this G20 is formed, right? We all have to learn to cooperate, even in classrooms, even in our community. We all need to put aside longings for turf, status, and power in order to achieve goals that benefit everyone. You know, an industrialist trying for his benefits all the time may not serve the purpose in the community, right? So these are issues I want to point out. So let us go to another one, community leadership examples. I think we are about to end, right? Community leadership examples, what are the examples? A citizen speaks up at the city council 
open meeting. I'll read again. A citizen speaks up at the city council opening meeting. Open meeting. Her words reveal the key issues regarding the local problem. The resulting discussion leads to a workable solution. So this is an example of community leader. A few people in the neighborhood successfully organized to protest the cutting down of trees by the city authority. Right? A few people in the neighborhood successfully organized to protest the cutting down of trees by the city. This is it. A family member generates a plan to help a loved one to stop smoking and enlisting the support of other family members. So someone who is helping his family members, his neighbor to stop smoking. These are also examples of community leader. A young person organizes a kick, a kick the can game after dinner on the block. Anyway, these are like, you know, bringing you know, the young people together. Those kind of activities are there. Examples of community by leaders having formal position or title. All right. The, the other side of the leadership also. A group of ministers creates an anti-drug an, an anti initiatives in the community. Right? Leaders who are in a position also can play the role of community leaders. A group of ministers creates an anti-drug initiative in the community. Right? A teacher periodically invites his students, his students' parents to a potluck dinner to talk about school issues. See? A kind of simple, simple community leadership. Don't think about big, big, big things when you talk about community leadership. We teacher also can play this kind of leadership, right? To talk about the issues of our students with the parents over a potluck dinner. A member of the city council proposed a task force to provide services for homeless people. The president of the high school drama club organizers organizes students to do a play that address racial conflicting among teens. All these are what is true about all the examples above. What is true about the example I have just presented? One or more people took responsibility for their communities. The truth about is, take more example. In all the example, the truth is one or more people took responsibility for their community. That's all. Can we be community leader? Can we be a part of the community leader teams? Right? I think these are, I think this is the end of my presentation. We have five more minutes. Then at one, after we finish this thing, I will rush to the State Institute of Rural Development for one valedictory function. They are having a training on a training need assessment for, you know, government officials. So that they have invited me to deliver a uh, valedictory speech there. So the, the training is organized by National Institute of Rural Development and Panchayati Raj. It's an off campus of NIRD, NIRD and PR. So after this, I'll be rushing. So maybe we still have a few minutes. I think the, the time is open for comment or questions or whatever. Let's see if I can see it. if I can see the the message from my yeah my WhatsApp. Yes, any comment or any question or you know within two three minutes we'll try to answer. Yeah, please. Thank you for such a wonderful lecture on community leadership. Oh, Priyanka, thank you very much. Yeah, sir, I think no much questions yes. now. Participate okay. and eating for the lunch break. 
so <laughs> okay uh, uh, so you are also in hari so thank you so much yeah. sir for accepting our invitation and uh, yeah. uh, giving this very uh, fruitful and very informative lecture thank you so much sir for your valuable yes. time yeah actually i am very happy to have this opportunity actually professor manoj is a good friend of mine so we are very good friends over here uh but then fortunate unfortunately you know my network in the computer went off so things could not uh, really go ahead thing could not really go ahead as planned but then somehow it's good that we could finish the 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 lecture thank you very much thank you all thank you thank you sir yes okay so dear participant after